I'm Dave Stevens. Uh, welcome back to uh, the Cyber Underground. Uh, my name is Dave Stevens. I'm an IT and cybersecurity instructor for the University of Hawaii Kapiolani Community College. And I have this show on Think Tech Hawaii to connect you, our viewer, with everyday cybersecurity. It connects to your life in more ways than you might know. Today, I have with me Frank Haas and uh, Gordo, the tech czar. Gordo, our co-host. Gordo. It's great being a co-host, lad. I think it, you know, I'm just another pretty face. A lot of And I'll just sit here and you do all the work. Nice spin-off, by the way. This is a spin-off of the old Hibachi spin -off. Talk. That's so. right. Yeah, Gordo so. is the host of Hibachi <laughs> Talk. And I've been a guest or a co-host on there about four times. And uh, we, we're doing a spin-off show. That's what this is. And how did you put it, Gordo? What is it's it? like, like there was Cheers. And then there was Frasier, there was Hibachi Talk, and now there's your show. And so there's my show, so I get to be Frasier. <laughs> it's awesome. You can be Frasier. All right. I'm Frasier. Oh, wait. Well, you, you know, he got married a number of times, too, you know. That's oh, wait, true. I'm sorry. Don't say that. <laughs> I, I joke with people. I came out for the, uh, to Hawaii for the job, and I stayed for the divorce. There you and go. Just, that's well, how it happened. And I got my solo cup, so we're all set. <laughs> that's right. Let's all take a, a, a nice shot of... Water. Yeah, I'll put water. WC feels it. Put water in my water. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, that's uh, refreshing. Ah, Does the body good? I know. Uh, mm, Who's water. our guest today? This is Frank. <laughs> 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 uh, Frank Alexa. Oh, we have a guest. Oh, here we are. Oh, my God. Where'd you come from? Uh, hello, Frank. Yeah, I, I thought this was cybersecurity, cyber comedy. But, uh, yeah, well, we kind of try to mix it up here. No, that's good. That's fine. <laughs> Mixing it up is what it's all about. Frank, mm -hmm. uh, you lecture at Capulani Community College, but you have a wealth of experience in hospitality and tourism. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got here, what you doing now? Okay, well, how I got here is a, a long story. A, <laughs> the U.S. Navy is the short version of that story. Uh, yeah. But I, would I, they just kick you off the ship and you got here? No, like, I was actually can't. headed to Vietnam, and for some reason, they changed my orders and said uh, we want you to go to Hawaii. And I said, mm, sounds oh, good. Okay. Yeah, okay, I can I'll do that. that. Yeah, so, all right. So I was yeah. stationed here for a few years. I went back to uh, the mainland, got my MBA. Came back here and I worked in a bunch of different jobs. My wife says I can't keep a job, but uh, I've worked in uh, advertising, I've worked in fast food and marketing. I was a uh, director of marketing for a uh, Hawaii Tourism Authority. Mm -hmm. uh, in my advertising career, I've worked on a lot of um, hospitality and tourism accounts. So I've seen uh, how that all plays through all the, all the issues that, uh, that very complicated industry faces. And we're here to talk about one important that's true, yes. They're facing right. now. They're facing and a pray tell, what could that be? <laughs> <laughs> what could that be, Frank? That could, well, there's, there's a lot of things going on right now. I mean, uh, before I get to what we want to talk okay. about, I mean, just the whole idea of security in general, when you've got a, a situation where they're saying we need to do uh, serious vetting for people to come into the um, into the to the uh, to travel mm -hmm. uh, you got people scared to travel because of terrorism mm. uh, to get a visa from China I, I don't know if you know what's involved but I've it costs there, a lot that. of money yep. yeah Didn't and it, yeah. you have to bring I mean, for the Chinese to come, come here, here yeah you have to have like your lease for your apartment your utility bill your you know uh, it's like Ten different pieces of documents. So um, I had no idea. Yeah, so wow. it's it's tough. It's tough to travel. Well, they're coming here with all that money to buy the condos in Kaka. Yeah. Well, we got to let them in. They got it. You got to show they have the money first. <laughs> but um, cybersecurity is another thing that they're that's a uh, hot hot topic right now. So I assume that's why you invited me. Yeah. Here. Why is it important <laughs> to uh, to your industry? Well, uh, hospitality embraced uh, the tech world much and e-commerce especially mm. much faster than other. Uh, Right. Uh, other uh, brick and mortar businesses. I mean, in retail, you can go to, you can go buy a book at a bookstore, or you can buy it from Amazon. You can go buy something at a store. You can buy it from eBay. You can buy it from some other uh, e-commerce. But um, you know, the whole transaction for travel is there's really nothing physical. It's 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 a it's a purchase of a bunch of services, and that's really easy to do uh, in e-commerce. And that, that's why the hospitality industry embraced it. That's a, a huge portion of what we do, and it's a very complex uh, transaction. So uh, e-commerce was a, a way to make that easy for the customer. You take a lot of risk when you go to the bleeding edge of something, mm -hmm. when, you, when you take that risk of being the first in an industry. And I think tourism was one of the first to venture out in the, in the, in the industry of e-commerce because they knew that there was such potential for growth, right? Mm -hmm. So and tell me, how does that affect the industry, I mean, on the bleeding edge, and how do they cope? Well. Uh, there's a lot of dimensions to that. Uh, 
it's, it's completely changed some of the distribution models in tourism. I mean, 30 years ago, you had travel agents that had a yep. You sit in an office, you go office. see the agent, yes. yeah. <laughs> and there's still some of those, and, and they've managed to survive, a, a, a portion of those have managed to survive by changing their business model. But that conventional business model they had, which was selling stuff at a storefront and taking a commission on it, that's, that doesn't happen anymore. The, uh, because of uh, uh, e-commerce, the airlines figured, we don't, we don't need the travel agent anymore. You can book direct on, on our website. I'm the travel agent. I'm the right. travel agent. You're the travel that's agent. Right. You're the travel agent. So, and then uh, into the breach came these online travel agencies. They said, well, people still need to put stuff together. They need to have a, uh, an air, air ticket, a hotel, a car, and all this stuff. So OTAs, online travel agencies, stepped into the breach, and, mm -hmm. and they get very, very high... Um, uh, commissions and, and margins on that stuff, which has changed the industry as well. Right. But all this activity online has really attracted people who say, hmm, no, there's there's a lot of money sitting there's around here. There's a lot here. of money there. How <laughs> yeah. do I get and my where, hands on and it? where yeah. there's money, uh, there are people who want to get a piece of it. And That's not right. all those people are good guys. It's real easy to steal money online. And it's, rather, why do I rob a bank? Yeah, when there's less risk in, less, in the, in the online. online, right? Yeah. yeah. So I, I think back in 1991, in the early days of the internet, uh, the uh, National Research Council said said exactly that: the modern thief can steal more with a computer than with a gun. Yeah. So we don't need weapons. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> just, just your. And the warranties were out on the, uh, the missiles that we just shot over to Syria. So those warranties were out. We have 59 missiles. It wasn't 60. We shot 59. Well, that's why anyway, we I shot them rest. all. The warranties were expired, so we had to get rid of them. Yeah, bury them in the at Nevada desert or get rid of them. It's so called, we gotta, you got to rotate the stock. It, it, that's how you do things in the military. Wait, why are we? Sorry. <laughs> we're off. This is yeah, not my show. Talking. This is not my show. I'm going to keep my mouth shut from this point forward. Anyway. So well, there's, there's this a huge uh, risk in this industry and a, an enormous amount of loss uh, year over year. Can you discuss the kind of loss we, we incur in the travel and tourism industry? And where does that loss come from? Well, it uh, comes from a bunch of different things. Some of it's hacks. Some mm -hmm. of it's just uh, um, uh, a loss of business. Some of it's lawsuits. Um, somebody in the travel industry estimated that overall losses in the industry is about a little under a half a percent of, of profit. And, you know, in a, in a for-profit business... But, that's uh, a, but what's the size half, of the industry? Oh, it's a trillion dollar industry. It's a trillion industry. dollar yeah. industry. So that's a lot yeah, of money. That's a lot of money. hundred billion dollars. So yeah. I don't even know what a trillion is, but I can tell you the difference between a million and a billion. <laughs> so a million seconds is 12 days, and, oh. a, and a billion seconds is 32 years. Oh. So can you imagine what a trillion seconds must be? It's got to be hundreds. A lifetime. A thousand. <laughs> <seconds>. Well, <laughs> yeah. a lifetime at least. Hopefully it's my lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. I want so that. that's yeah. the kind of money we're talking A half a percent of that is a lot. That's a lot of money out there, yeah. And what, but what, but the, losses are, the losses are pretty big. Uh, IBM has estimated that the average breach costs an average company about $4 million. So these small-time players would get devastated right. by this kind of a breach. I, if you want to look at it on a per-record basis, the estimate for uh, if you get hacked, uh, it's about $158 per record. For so if you're talking about 10,000 records or 20,000 records, that's a lot. Right. That's, that's on the travel industry records? That's general. That's general. general. Wow. So I believe that's the that's what uh, Visa Mastercard might charge the customer or the vendor for plus, losing that number. Plus yeah. other affiliated charges. Yeah. That's on average, which includes lawsuits and things like that. I mean, that's that's a huge number. When yeah, you're talking when about you a couple at, hundred thousand, right? Well, it's not a couple hundred thousand. When you're talking about some of the big breaches that Several there have million. been. It's um, the B word again. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I've got some, some notes here. Epsilon uh, compromised a bunch of, uh, uh, they handle a lot of business with Fortune 500 companies, and they had a breach that cost them between three and four billion dollars. Ouch. And Sony, that affects the bonuses. Right Sony there. in 2011 yeah. had a breach uh, of 100 million customer records. Yep. And that was 2011. You'd think they'd learn their lesson. No, no, no. In 2014. No, no mon ami. Uh, they, got, they, got, they got hacked again. And this time it cost them about $100 million. Yep. Oh, I mean, that, that, that makes me cross my legs. That hurts. So, yeah. It's, <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I'll have another glass of water. A little sip of water. So, my question is, like, you know, the, the travel industry, because it's so, um, that's the word bifurcated, but it's, yeah. it's everywhere, right? Yes. There's all, so many different people touching that's, pieces of your record. One of the reasons we're such a good target is we have, <laughs> okay. we, we're so big, we have, we have a lot of data. Uh, and it's not just it's not just uh, your financials. It's it's names. See, we, we family members. Yes, we're sure. we're a rich data source for thieves. We uh, if you're booking a trip, we tell you uh, your name, 
your uh, payment information, credit card information, but also date, dates yeah. of travel, yeah. names of other people. And then we give it to somebody. And say you're booking a cruise. So you call a travel agent, I'm going to book a cruise. So the travel agent takes your information. What does the travel agent do with it? Well, they have to call the cruise line and give that information to the cruise right. line. If they're booking your air, they, they give it to the airline. Uh, the cruise line then takes that information and says, okay, we're, gonna, we're going to uh, book a, uh, shore excursions. So they give the information to shore excursion. And the, the information just goes out all over the place. And that's why, you know, if you, if you can crack into the uh, visitor industry, it's a huge... So the, and from the hacker's perspective, these are called multiple attack vectors. Mm -hmm. There's multiple paths to get into this information. And you don't have to hack the big Sony. In fact, you can act a, a the, smaller vendor and get in. You go to the weakest in, link. Weakest link. And right. take the cruise example. I mean, some of those uh, uh, service providers, some of those uh, shore excursions are in Lithuania. A small little Estonia, town somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Mazatlan. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Kauai. <laughs> Kauai. That's true, yeah. So um, when, when, we're, um, when we're travel industry, when we're in industry and we're taking credit cards, what's some of the liabilities that we accept, some of the risk that we have to deal with being uh, a credit card accepting kind of company? Well, the, the part of the risk is just being hacked. That's the first thing. The, uh, the other is that, uh, that uh, if you are hacked, the, the, the repu your reputation's on the line. I mean, if right. you're a Starwood or a Hilton, you, mm -hmm. you just don't want Which that. Home and Depot, then there, Target. Then there are losses. Yep. I mean, the, um, uh, one, of the, one of the newest uh, threats in the travel industry, uh, we've been watching people steal financial uh, currency. Right. Uh, you know, they hack, they... They, they take they, their money. They, That's why they, I got they, money they in the, Bitcoin, and don't let me get started on that again. <laughs> <laughs> but the latest and greatest thing, because uh, the travel industry started to get more sensitive and secure about right. about currency uh, information. Mm. But they were, they're also sitting on this these other assets called member benefit stuff, uh, miles, points. People have hacked that, steal the points, put it on the dark web, you can yep. go on some dark web sites and actually put a um, put a package together. You yep. can buy you can buy air seats, you can buy hotel rooms, you can buy rental, rental cars, cars. You can yeah. do it all. And, and, you put, you and put on, on miles that you don't even have. Right. And that's a form of cryptocurrency, no matter what way well, you look you at it. Well, you can you yeah. buy those miles on the dark web using yeah. whatever currency they'll take. Whatever and, um, on yeah. your Tor browser. I'm not telling you how to do this stuff, but there's just ways to do this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> when I teach, I, I introduce my students to the Tor browser, and yeah. I, I'm always a little nervous at KCC as I uh, bring it up. To no, <laughs> I do the same thing in my cyber classes, but I tell my students, do not have an expectation of privacy in right. any circumstance. Correct. Even Tor will probably be um, uh, open to uh, somebody who has the time and resources to try to hack the browser. Mm -hmm. uh, NSA, CSI, uh, uh, CIA, um, FBI, the Kremlin, whoever wants to get in really has the time and resources and finance to put enough people on that, they'll get in. But Tor can't protect you from the script kitties, the people that are just out there practicing with some tools that they downloaded yep. off the web, you're safe from them. The, the problem is when you look at the Tor browser, I mean, it's really slow. Right, but then you're getting encrypted, mm -hmm. randomized links throughout the Tor network, yeah. which is kind of which nice. is why it's slow. Which is why it's slow. It's why it's doing all of that stuff. <laughs> okay, we're coming up on a break, but uh, really, uh, really quick. Um, why the hospitality industry in particular? Is it just because they have so much money? And there's also banks out there, but hospitality is it multiple attack vectors, or it's just the ease of well, entry. Well, part of it's the ease. Uh, one of the things about hospitality is that uh, we. we we're hospitable. We want to make it easy for our customers. Mm. So, oh, yeah, so yeah. Do, we, do we want to have really strict uh, uh, protocols on uh, two forms of identification or uh, other things that a normal company might do if you're worried about security? In the hospitality industry, we want to make it quick and easy for people to, to do a booking. Otherwise, so, someone might choose another vendor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the convenience is always going to kill that CIA triangle of confidentiality, integrity, and availability. It makes something too available, confidentiality and integrity fade away. You, know, you flatten out that line, and, and that's a huge that's a huge deal. Sure. Okay, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back in uh, in two minutes or one minute. We've got one minute. Hi, I'm Marianne Sasaki. We just completed another great episode of Life in the Law, and I'm here today with Jay Fidel. Hi, Jay. Hi, Marianne. And what do we love about the law, Jay? There's so much to love about it, right? 
There's more to love about it all the time. Uh, no kidding. We have to be a nation of laws. We have to be a nation of laws, and we have to be a diligent nation of law, of law, law lawyers and citizens. It's all about the rule of law, Mary. Yes. The rule of law is alive and well and life in the law. Yes, it's, yes, it certainly is. Tune in every Wednesday from 1 to 1.30 on Think Tech. Hello, ha, how you doing? It's me, Angus McTech, asking you to come join us on Think Tech Hawaii Hibachi Talk. Join me and my two hosts, Gordo the Texar and Andrew the Security Guy, every Friday from 12.45 till 13.45. See you on Fridays, and remember, let your wing gang free, wherever you be. <laughs> Uh, welcome back to Cyber Underground. I'm Dave Stevens with my co-host Gordo, the tech czar, and Frank Haas, a lecturer at Capulani Community College, talking about the dangers uh, in cyber uh, security relationships in uh, the hospitality and tourism mm -hmm. industry. Now, we discussed a number of things, and uh, I'd like to ask you about the latest and most concerning threats. Well, I, I just mentioned the, uh, the people stealing points and uh, yeah. uh, uh, other assets that are not not money. You plan uh, a whole vacation. Yeah, you yeah. Can plan a whole yeah. vacation. Um, certainly, uh, denial of service if you're an airline. If yeah. somebody wants to uh, shut you down, Delta, Delta um, had their computer system go down. It wasn't. It wasn't. A, they, I don't think it was a cyber threat. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I remember that. But it was uh, recent, and it, it, uh, it basically shut down the airline for a couple of days. You know so what Del Delta stands for. D-E-L-T-A, doesn't ever leave the airport. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Delta. I'm done now. Gone. There's a little shot down again. Yeah. <laughs> You've been taking Hawaiian everywhere all, now. All of the airlines have <laughs> one of those. Things. I know. They Northwest do. was fine. It was Northwest, you know. <laughs> Northwest. <laughs> United was untidy. <laughs> I mean, this, that's just, they all have their own. Actually, yeah. when you talk about threats, uh, <laughs> apart from cyber crimes, the, uh, one of the threats is your reputation. And a lot of these airlines, a lot of the hotels, have, um, have sites that are created by unhappy customers. There's a, there's a site called Untied, which has a big disclaimer when it comes up that this is not the United Airlines yeah. site, but it's unhappy customers who are uh, posting. Also, are things like Yelp. You know, when yeah. Yelp, you know, it's like Yelp. You get you get blamed for things maybe you didn't do. Well, and then the the challenge in the service industry is you you know even the best even the Four Seasons of the world, the Ritz Carlton's of the world, it's hard to be a hundred percent with with uh, guest service. There's something I teach yes. a marketing course. It's called the heterogeneity of service. I the, can't even spell that word. That's uh, that's why it's in college. See, we don't understand. <laughs> in the IT industry, we 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 uh, we shoot for 100 percent reliability, and we always get there. It's, but it's you're never. You're not dealing with. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting a lot closer. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> hearing aids are acting up again. <laughs> the problem with hospitality is different people are providing that service all the time. I mean, mm. I can go to the front desk of a hotel and have a really hospitable, friendly. Uh, well-trained person, and then I come back the next day, and it's you know a new hire that doesn't know where anything is, that's got a bad attitude that day. So right. that's that's a that's a challenge where we have a reputation. And customers now, when they get a, some bad service, they'll go on create their own website. Yeah, create a website. They're going Yelp and stuff. I used to uh, when I was in advertising, I used to advise my clients to register whatever their company name was sucks. Because if they weren't going to own the name, <laughs> they could block it from that. Well, they own it. <laughs> I, I better, if I should talk sucks, no, I, I, I better go get that. I better go get cyber. Better that you have it. Uh, somebody that's, else. That's right? great. I, could, I need a cyber squad on that, right? You now. do the KS and the X, and they got, oh, that's a lot of domains, man. That's a lot of, you need to buy in both, man. <laughs> dot org dot com dot name so we're, we're looking at a so, lot of things so, though some right? of the other uh, you asked about risks the, uh, some yeah. of the other risks are uh, Arby's just got uh, hacked mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of their uh, customers are joining a, a class action lawsuit so not only is it bad reputation there's legal fees there's probably going to be a settlement so it's that's a lot of money so, and yeah. ransomware now is costing a ransomware. lot of, a lot of money yeah. and people are falling for this left and right and if you're a ransomware attacker and someone pays you the money, you still have the choice to unlock the software or not. If you really want to get away clean, you don't send them the key to the software yeah. and you just walk away. And that, that's a huge problem. I mean, we've had businesses here that have been affected. Mm -hmm. I think there's statistics in, um, I was looking at a threat brief this morning 
and uh, a huge population of uh, big companies in Great Britain have been the victims of ransomware, and they're not. They don't want to tell anybody. Well, here again, the hospitality industry wants to be responsive. Mm. I mean, they're trained to, mm -hmm. you get an email, you respond. So you get something that looks like it comes oh, from... Oh, you want to be right on it. I yeah. want to respond right now. Right. 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 Yeah. And then, you know, with social engineering, these, uh, these uh, ransomware emails look legit. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're, they've actually gotten pretty sophisticated in terms of the, their, their look and feel. And, um, you know... Boom, and guess how you pay the ransomware? I just got to insert this. I just got to do it. Through Tor. Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Right? <laughs> Bitcoin. That's and, right. And guess what? The state of Hawaii shut down Coinbase, which is one of the largest Bitcoin traders uh, exchanges in the, in the country, and the state of Hawaii shut them down. So now if someone gets a ransomware attack, those of us that get called to help them out have to find another way to get their problems solved. Someone on the mainland, probably. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like they, they think you're gonna shut down every Bitcoin in there. <laughs> and no, there's okay. always gonna be some. All day long. <laughs> I, mean, I, was, I was looking at the um, at the message that comes for somebody that hits. It didn't happen to me, but somebody that hits the uh, ransomware response. Yeah. And it, it it's instructions. It says uh, first download. Here's how you download Tor. Yeah. Then here's here's how you're gonna have to pay for it, and then you're gonna get this key, and you have to install yep. the key. They're very customer service friendly. <laughs> yes, they Actually, are. They, but the good thing is for right. the viewers, though, the good news for the viewers that watch the show, that if you go to the FBI websites and a number of websites, they do have the keys. So a lot of the keys now have been published. Oh, they've been reusing the keys. So they've been well, reusing. Yeah. So you right. can go, figure that so out. That's at least for in some. That's instead of paying it, go check to see if the key is there, and you might be able to get it unlocked without having to go through um, the payment. I can't Which believe how easy this is now, though. There's a uh, security. Uh, engineering toolkit or SET at set you can download this it comes with the Kali Linux flavor and all the cybersecurity tools are on it and if you know how to do a little bit of Linux you can just operate this thing it's just a menu driven program you go and you copy facebook.com or whatever you want and you send out emails via this program it's in 15 seconds you can get this working off your laptop it's insane how easy that is and you can get people's passwords right away. Yep. Well, and you can buy identity on the, on the dark oh, web. Oh, the dark web, yeah. Um, Any website you know, I want to be a member of, actually. You, you were talking about <laughs> you know, what, what other things are going on with the uh, visitor industry, the uh, uh, sex trafficking, uh, get information about that. It's marketed through the dark web. So um, There's some sick folks out there. Yeah. That's sick. The, yeah. the dark web is pretty incredible. Now, uh, you, were, you were mentioning to me uh, events called Black Swan. Yeah. Can you describe that for our audience and how that affects your industry? Well, Black Swan is something you absolutely can't predict because mm -hmm. it's never happened before. It's outside of your realm of logical thinking. 9-11 uh, was a Black Swan. Mm -hmm. Nobody really mm -hmm. thought that somebody was going to get in an airplane and drive it into a building. Uh, but it happened. Uh, the question is, almost by definition, it's impossible to have predicted right. Black Swan because yeah. it's unpredictable. The but, terrorism version of zero day hack. But the right. way to do it, or the way to at least try to do it, is uh, I know I've been talking to you, Dave, about some of the stuff that you do. It's the white hats and black hats. You do, you do what the U.S. Navy does. They do war games. Mm. Uh, you know, the the blue against the gold and see see who wins. Uh, I was reading about <laughs> Pearl Harbor, and prior to the prior to World War II, there was a war game where uh, the enemy team bombed Pearl Harbor yeah. and they figured out how to do it because the harbor is shallow they figured out how to develop these torpedoes that were would run in shallow water and they they actually successfully attacked Pearl Harbor and now documented it do. Pardon? And, and documented, and documented, it. And, documented <laughs> it and the US Navy didn't believe it so they ignored it and I don't think they showed that documentation with the people that were in charge of Pearl Harbor in 1941 well we need to do sort of the same things where people game you try to break into mm -hmm. systems, mm -hmm. try to test the systems, and I know you're doing that. And yeah, that, and that's right now, gonna, yeah, we that do that. We do the mm -hmm. uh, cyber defense competition, collegiate cyber defense competition, CCDC, every year. And we also have another competition called the National Cyber League that happens two or three times a year, uh, fall and spring at, at a very minimum. And then uh, we have Poihe, which is here at UH. We do another cybersecurity competition. These are all capture the flag, red team, blue team. We have a defensive team and an offensive team. And we practice attacking networks 
and the networks are simulated companies. Right. You have a web server, file server, <clears> you have <throat> customer service agents, uh, you, and then you have things called injects where the judge will inject, oh, my website went down, or oh, I need to recover my password, please walk me through these steps, and they try to socially engineer those people. So if I could just you know, interject, because you're, I've got, you know, I'm using your skill sets of the students <laughs> yeah. to do white hack hacking of, oh, yes. of clients, right? That's right. So have agreed to have you come in and do this. I think it's important that people watch this show that realize that if they want to have someone come in and do a white hack hack yeah. to test their security systems, you're doing that now. You're we providing do. We that. Have a, we have an ICT club at Capulani Community College that does actual penetration tests on private companies for donations. For yeah. What you have to realize is the black hats are doing this all the time. Oh, I know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but that's exactly how they come up with the black swans. Mm. You know, they, uh, we finally get security uh, in the secure areas of the, of the airports, and what do, what do the terrorists do? They, they, they set off a bomb outside of that. Mm. They did that in Istanbul and Brussels. Right. You know, they, uh, they get screening of uh, certain uh, explosives that uh, get caught, and they invent liquids that's why you can't bring liquids on the airplane oh yeah the binary can, liquid yeah, combinations yeah, right so the, the the black hats are always doing that so it's incumbent upon industry the, the private sector to have the white sets hats do that challenge and see how they can there's another thing though the, not only the penetration test but what i'm my finding is that most companies will say oh we've we've gone out and we've hired a couple of cybersecurity professionals they're going to protect us and I, I tell those people, no, <laughs> this is a hive mentality operation. You need to get everybody involved. If everybody knows what these, these possibilities are, then you're much more defensible than if just one or two guys are trying to go out there and protect your network. Well, I, I love that term, hive, but it, it, really, it, it really translates to having a culture in the company that understands the importance of security and cybersecurity. And that starts management all the way down to the, to the front desk. Uh, a lot of what I teach in, at Kapilani Community College is just be aware. Whether you're running in the front desk or, or uh, a department, you need to know the tra that uh, training is important, uh, awareness is important, security is important, and then it's got to permeate it's through the whole staff. continuous, because mm -hmm. yeah, you're, already, you're always rotating yeah, people through there, yeah? Okay, so we're, we're almost done for today. Mm -hmm. I want to thank Frank for being on the sure. show. Happy to be and here. And Gordo, you're always welcome. I love having uh, you. But uh, you uh, anytime you provide the water, lad, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take another <laughs> sip of water. Uh, thank you so much, and we'll be back next week with another episode. I think next week we're going to handle uh, cybersecurity in academia. Ooh. Which is a Ooh. huge I'll deal, right? That. That's yeah, a right. joxymoron or whatever you want to call it. Oh, oxymoron. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's give everyone a great big aloha, everybody. One, two, three. Aloha. 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 <laughs>